Good afternoon everyone, we're group 3 and we're here to present about the ancient Greek architecture. Ancient Greece The term ancient or archaic Greece refers to the years 700 to 480 BC, not the classical age which started at 480 to 323 BC. Known for its art, architecture, and philosophy, archaic Greece saw advances in art, poetry, and technology but it is known as the age in which the polis, or city-state, was invented. The mainland and islands of Greece are very rocky, with deeply indented coastlines and rugged mountain ranges with few substantial forests. The most freely available building material is stone. Limestone was readily available and easily worked. There is an abundance of high-quality white marble both on the mainland and islands. This finely grained material was a major contributor, contributing factor to precision of detail, both architectural and sculptural, that adorned ancient Greek architecture. Deposits of high-quality potter's clay were found throughout Greece and the islands, with major deposits near Athens, and it was used not only for pottery vessels, but also roof tiles and architectural decorations. Here we have... An example, the limestone, the white marble, and potter's clay. The climate of Greece is maritime, with both the coldness of winter and the heat of summer tempered by sea breezes. This led to a lifestyle where many activities took place outdoors. Hence, temples were placed on hilltops. Their exteriors designed as a visual focus of gathering and processions while the theaters were often an enhancement of a natural occurring sloping site where people could sit rather than containing structure. Colonnades encircling buildings or surrounding courtyards provided shelter from the sun and from sudden winter storms. The light of Greece may be another important factor in the development of the particular character of ancient Greek architecture. The light is often extremely extremely bright, with both the sky and the sea vividly blue. The clear light and sharp shadows give a precision to the details of the landscape, pale rocky outcrops, and seashore. This clarity is alternated with periods of haze that varies in color to the light on it. In this characteristic environment, the ancient Greek architects constructed buildings that were marked by the precision of detail. The gleaming marble surfaces were smooth, curved, fluted, or ornately sculpted to reflect the sun, cast graded shadows, and change in color with the ever-changing light of day. History Historians divide ancient Greek civilization into two eras, the Hellenic period and the Hellenistic period. During the earlier Hellenic period, substantial works of architecture began to appear around 600 BC. During the later period, Greek culture spread as a result of Alexander's conquest of the other lands and later as a result of the rise of the Roman Empire, which adopted much of Greek culture. The Hellenic world is what we recognize as Greek art today. It embodied exuberance, cheerful sensuality, and course with marble statues and reliefs depicted human greatness and sensuality. A notable achievement is in the rise of the architecture of the Doric and Ionic columns. In the Hellenistic world, art became less art and more commodity. The art of this time was supported by many wealthy patrons who used art for show rather than to pursue it for its own pleasure. The architecture of this period also reflected the inherent materialism of art, emphasizing grandeur and luxuriance. However, some architectural achievements include the first lighthouse and the citadel of Alexandria and the Corinthian column. Characteristics of the Ancient Greek Architecture The ancient Greeks had a unique style of architecture that is still copied in today's government buildings and major monuments throughout the world. Greek architecture is known for its tall columns, intricate detail, symmetry, harmony, and balance. The Greeks built most of their temples and government buildings in three types of style, the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. These styles were reflected in the type of columns they used. Most all of the columns had groups down the side called flooding. 
This gave the columns a feeling of depth and balance. Doric. Doric columns were the most simple and the thickest of the Greek styles. They had no decoration at the base and a simple capital at the top. Doric columns tapered so they were wider on the bottom than at the top. Ionic. It is distinguished by slender, fluted pillars with a large base and two opposed volutes, also called scrolls, in the echinus of the capital. Ionic columns were thinner than the Doric and had a base at the bottom. The capital at the top was decorated with scrolls on each side. Corinthian is the most ornate of the Greek orders, characterized by a slender fluted column having an ornate capital decorated with two rows of acanthus leaves and four scrolls. It is commonly regarded as the most elegant of the three orders. The shaft of the Corinthian order has 24 flutes. The column is commonly 10 diameters high. Post and lintel. It is composed of upright beams, posts, supporting horizontal beams. Although the existence of buildings, the era of the constructed in stone, it is clear that the origin of the style lies in simple wooden structures, with vertical posts supporting beams which carried a ridged roof. The posts and beams divided the walls into regular compartments which could be left as an openings or filled with sun-dried bricks, laths or straw, and covered with clay or plaster. Entablature and pediment. The entablature is the major horizontal structural element supporting the roof and encircling the entire building. It is composed of three parts. Resting on the columns is the architrave made of a series of stones, lintels, that span the space between the columns and meet each other at a joint directly above the center of each column. Above the architrave is a second horizontal stage called the frieze. The frieze is one of the major decorative elements of the building and carries a sculptured relief. The upper band of the entablature is called the cornice, which is generally ornated decorated on its lower edge. The cornice ret retains the shape of the beams that would once have supported the wooden roof at each end of the building. At the front and rear of each temple, the entablature supports a triangular structure called the pediment. So here's an example of the pediment, entablature, the column, and the base. Masonry. Every temple rested on a masonry base called the Crepidoma, generally of three steps, of which the upper one which carried the columns was the stylobate. Masonry walls were employed for temples from about 600 BC onwards. Masonry of all types was used for ancient Greek buildings, including rubble, but the finest ashlar masonry was usually employed for temple walls in regular courses and large sizes to minimize the joints. The blocks were rough hewn and hauled from quarries to be cut and bedded very precisely, with mortar hardly ever being used. Blocks, particularly those of column and parts of the building bearing loads, were sometimes fixed in place or reinforced with iron clamps, dowels, and rods of wood, bronze or iron, fixed and lid to minimize corrosion. Proportion and Optical Illusion The ideal of proportion that was used by ancient Greek architects in designing temples was not a simple mathematical progression using a square module. The math involved a more complex geometrical progression, the so-called golden mean. The ratio is similar to that of the growth patterns of many spiral forms that occur in nature such as rams, horns, nautilus shells, fern fronts, and vine tendrils, and which were a source of decorative motifs employed by ancient Greek architects as particularly in evidence in the volutes of capital of the Ionic and Corinthian orders. Types of Buildings Domestic Buildings the Greek word for the family or household, oikos, is also the name for the house. Houses followed several different types. It is probable that many of the earliest houses were simple structures of two rooms with an open porch or panaos, 
above which rose a low-pitched gable or pediment. This form is thought to have contributed to temple architecture. The construction of many houses employed walls of sun-dried clay bricks or wooden framework filled with fibrous material such as straw or seaweed covered with clay or plaster on a base of stone which protected the more vulnerable elements from damp. The roofs were probably of thatch with eaves which overhung the permeable walls. Many larger houses such as those at Delos were built of stone and plaster. The roofing material for the substantial house was tile. Houses of the wealthy had mosaic floors and demonstrated the classical style. Stoa is a Greek architectural term that describes a covered walkway or colonnade that was usually designed for public use. Early examples, often implying the dark order, were usually composed of a single level, although later examples, Hellenistic and Roman, came to be two-story freestanding structures. Greek city planners came to prefer the stoa as a device for framing the agora, public marketplace of a city or town. This is the example of stoa architecture. Stadium. The Greek stadium is the location of foot races held as part of sacred games. These structures are often found in the context of sanctuaries. Long and narrow, with a horseshoe shape, the stadium occupied reasonably flat terrain. Gymnasium. The gymnasium from the Greek term gymnos meaning naked was a training center for the athletes who participated in public games. This facility tended to include areas for both training and storage. Palestra The gymnasium from the Greek term gymnos meaning naked was a training center for the athletes who participated in public games. This facility tended to include areas for both training and storage. Religion Religion played a key role in ancient Greek architecture. The Greeks were polytheistic, worshipping many gods. Many of the infamous structures such as the Parthenon and the Acropolis were influenced by a particular Greek god or goddesses. The beauty and elegance of these temples was inspired by powerful Greek gods and can still be seen in the ruins of the structures today. Ancient Greek art stands out among that of other ancient cultures for its development of naturalistic but idealized depictions of the human body, in which largely nude male figures were generally the focus of innovation from pottery metal works figurines and coins show the distinctive art style of ancient greece this is the example of art painting was also used to enhance the visual aspects of architecture certain parts the superstructure of Greek temples were habitually painted since the archaic period. Such architectural polychromy could take the form of bright colors directly applied to the stone or of elaborate patterns. Frequently, architectural members made of terracotta. Much of the figural or architectural sculpture of ancient Greece was painted colorfully.